Okay, Thank thanks very much. I appreciate your interest in our technology. This has been an exciting time for me because, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, 20 years ago I was involved in startup, a uh, gigabit startup was bought by Cisco, and it really struck me then that, you know, equipment providers sell boxes and customers build networks, and it's like you sell the parts and let the, the user put them together, and, uh, you know, it was only after the uh, my Arista experience where we provided APIs and of course we pried open many enterprise markets so people were talking about multi-vendor and things and then white box came along that there was a lot of interest in kind of up leveling having software that would manage multiple different types of switches and the APIs made it possible and the cost of finding people to do all of this made it compelling to do this and certainly we see you know, that's, I'm sure what you've heard is the operating system, or operating costs are pushed down. And, you know, when we started this company, I'm got an operating system background, you know, and I, uh, building, I always thought one of the great inspirations for, in the early days of computing was the, just with a single computer, the only thing that was efficient enough to run a computer was another computer program. And that's the birth of the operating system, the thing that operates a system. So to me, the obvious thing was to provide an operating system for the network that operated the network. And so, you know, we have a lot of analogies we've used in that form. It's just here, it's a distributed operating system when we treat the switches device drivers. Um, now, you know, with this operating system background, I see a lot of people saying, well, gee, if you have to do management, there must be a lot of AI involved or something like that. But, um, you know, these days what's very popular is AI means machine learning, and machine learning is a fancy term for statistical inference. And, uh, you know, when Google recognizes cats and images, when they get 90%, you're very happy because you say, well, rather than having searching through thousands of images to find ones of cats, I get ones which are 90% cats, and it saves me a lot of time. Just the uh, 10% I ignore, like there's a gorilla in there, I don't know why, but <laughs> maybe an ocelot, and maybe a chicken, but who knows why. Whereas in networking, we talk in terms of nines, and in that definition, you can argue with it, that's one nine. <laughs> and nobody around here talks in one nine of networking if they want to keep their job. They don't even talk of two nines, which is we're up 99% of the time or even three nines, I think everybody says, well, we're four nines trying to get to five, or we're five nines trying to get to six. And so there's orders of magnitude different expectations between recognizing cats and running a network. And, uh, you know, from our standpoint, I think we're all very practical system builder type people here. We're trying to apply the best engineering technology we can to the problems at hand. and. Uh, when we're dealing primarily with how you run the network and how you keep it working reliably, how you reconfigure it, how do you detect when things are going wrong, these are real-time problems and you can't afford to collect statistics and then identify something which is always an outlier. Actually, you should say an out-out outlier because you know if your network is up and running healthy 99.99% of the time it's that 0.001% that you worry about the thing that gets the calls from the VPs and so on and so we don't think that statistics plays a role in real time sort of operation of things now I think that um, who was it? Somebody's line about some some sophisticated version, any real sufficiently sophisticated version of technology appears like magic. And uh, you know, I think that what we're building is fairly sophisticated. It integrates all the knowledge that we have on staff and people we work with in how you run networks, the things that can go wrong in networks, the important things to monitor. And so, I think it can appear intelligent, <laughs> but I think there's and I think we do have cases where we apply statistics to things and we track down things, but I think our overall approach is to use the right technology to solve the right sort of problems. And I think a core piece of, of what I think is a key uh, tenant of what we're building here is scalability. And 
you know, scalability is kind of this nice, friendly word. It's just incredibly hard to achieve from an engineering standpoint because scalability means on all the dimensions that matter here. And, you know, anybody can run a small network. <laughs> you know, your mother could probably operate a network with three switches in it and so on. But it's when you get to a large number of switches that matters, when you get a large amount of traffic, when you get a large variation of things. So we see ourselves being pushed and stepping up to the challenge of scalability on the aspect of some of our customers have huge networks and are growing larger, so they need that kind of scale. Some of them, all of them, are going to higher and higher speeds, going to faster rates of changing the network, so all of these factors factor into scalability. And I think there's another element of scalability, which is that there's a lot in common how different customers run their networks, but there's still the need to tweak because you end up with customers having specific requirements in their business and so uh, we view that the extensibility is part of the, the scalability. So overall, I think that's what we're putting in front of us is the biggest challenge. And again, we're not claiming we're not AI. We're not claiming we are AI and what we do. We're just saying we're applying the best engineering that we can to, to solve the, the customer's problems and, and uh, really scale our solution properly.